Next, we have Sun Ha Hong. Um, he is currently an assistant professor in the School of Communication, and tonight Sun Ha is going to be presenting his findings on fake news for fake pills, disinformation beyond politics and its historical roots. His research examines emerging styles of truth-making across self-tracking, political disinformation, and deep fakes. Let us welcome Sun Ha. All right. Hello, everyone. So we're going to hear a lot about fake news, a lot about this information today, and we're going to look at a lot of them in the posters. And what I want to do here is ask, what's the big picture here? Because yes, there's the Russian trolls. Yes, there's the white supremacists. Sadly, they exist. But the problem actually goes far beyond that. And today, I want to point out three of these beyonds that we should also be paying attention to. So the first thing that's happening out there is we're going from fake news stories to a whole new horizon of manufactured information. Last year, we saw the emergence of deep fakes. These are basically a simple and easy way for people to take somebody's face, somebody's body, transplant it on somebody else, and bam, you've got an AI-generated fake video. So the first problem is obviously that this is going to revolutionize the fake news industry. I'm um, going to show you here a warning uh, deep fake video that was created by BuzzFeed just to show us how convincing it can get. Moving forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the internet. So that's not Obama talking, right? This example is a warning. You've got Jordan Peele on the right, and he reads out the script, and that gets transplanted into a fake Obama speech. Uh, one of, and one of my students actually ended up quoting him as Obama in, in their paper. So you can see the problem there. Um, but beyond politics, beyond the obvious targets, there's a new range of information that's able to be manufactured. NVIDIA, well known for the computer graphics chips they produce, they can now create artificial faces that look this good. Very, very hard to tell apart until you look up close. And I'm already seeing some fake profiles on Twitter that use these faces to pass themselves off as real people. Um, the technology doesn't have to be miserable. It can also be joyful and fun. Uh, the research, researchers are using this tech to help people dance like they've never danced before. So you take the source subject who can dance, the target who cannot dance, and then you put them together and bam, you've got the target who can dance or, or at least try to dance. Uh, a reason I can't even tell what's good dancing anymore these days. Um, <laughs> But so, so it can be joyful, okay? And there's other things, you know, somebody said, this looks fun, why don't I take my wife and combine her with Anne Hathaway? So there's Anne Hathaway on the left, there's the merged version on the right. Um, and this was done with the wife's permission. It's all, you know, it's, it's all well and good, just for good fun. However, if you look on the darker reaches of the web, there are now people saying, hey, I have some photographs of my friend or my classmate uh, that I got off Facebook and Instagram. Can you use this to combine her with a pornographic video on the internet so that I can masturbate to it? So, so you know, this is a real request that's out there that's been considered. I don't know if that particular video that got made. But so the kind of context where we're going to face these fakes is multiplying. And it's not just the techniques. It's the purpose of the disinformation that's diversifying. So think about this guy, Alex Jones, who's a household name in the world of fake news. Usually we think of him as a yelling, screaming, angry conspiracy theorist, and he certainly is that. He revels in it. But he is also a topless vitamin seller. What Alex, really, what Alex Jones does is he gets an audience, he gets a following through his conspiracy theories, and then he monetizes that audience by selling them shady nutritional supplements, such as super male vitality, which will turn you into a super male through rare earth crystals or something. Um, so this is a business of fake news for fake pills. And that means it's not just about politics in the direct sense. These connections point us to a wider network of anxieties and beliefs that we find with the anti-vaxxers, we find with shady wellness businesses like Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop, and other places where we've got this dissatisfaction with science, with journalism, with established forms of truth. So fake news as we know it is part of this wider struggle we have with what I call personal truth making. This idea that maybe the experts are wrong, maybe the media is biased, and maybe we should find out our own truth on the internet. And that's an idea that most of us have flirted with at some point in our daily lives. 
That's because the Western world has seen a steep generational decline in trust in institutions. Basically any institution, basically every institution, even in Canada, where we tend to be more trusting than the Americans, less than half of the population trust in the media. So yes, there are hardcore white supremacists. Yes, there are hardcore conspiracy theories, theorists, and we need to tackle those very aggressively. But beyond that, there's also a general cultural sentiment that has to be better understood and addressed. A lot more research still has to be done, but I think there are some early lessons here. The techniques for disinformation are going to advance rapidly over the next few years. To meet that challenge, we need to attack the root, not just the symptom. We need to restore public trust around our institutions. And to do that, we need the kind of institutions, our media, our politicians, that we feel like we can trust again. Thank you.